Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Holy Comforter Episcopal Church YouTube Bible study. Uh, we're looking at the scripture lessons for Sunday, July 2nd. Uh, we're going to be looking at Genesis chapter 22. Now, uh, just want to give you fair warning. Uh, this is one of the most disturbing passages uh, in the entirety of the Bible. Uh, this is uh, what's called the sacrifice of Isaac or the binding of Isaac. Um, it's the story when Abraham is commanded to sacrifice his child, Isaac. Um, so we're going to read it, and I want to talk about it, um, but I want you to know that, that it's just a little bit disturbing. So uh, be ready for that as we move into this. So Genesis chapter 22 verses 1 through 18. After these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So, whoa, so just like, okay, yikes, time out, that's crazy. Verse 3, so Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father, Abraham, father, and he said, Here I am, my son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place the Lord will provide, as it is said to this day. On the mountain of the Lord it shall be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you. And I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven as the, and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies. And by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. Okay, a very intense uh, lesson. So let's kind of break a few of these things down. First of all, um, remember that, that Abraham has been promised a son through whom um, all nations will come to know God. So uh, that's the covenant that God has made with Abraham. And up until this point, there have been various threats to the covenant. The first threat is that Abraham and Sarah are very old, and it doesn't seem like they're going to have a baby. So that's the first threat. God overcomes that threat by, um, by providing them a child even in their old age. The second threat is when Ishmael is born, uh, remember, um, Abraham and Sarah kind of panic, so Abraham gets with Hagar, um, Sarah's servant, and then they have Ishmael. And so then that's the threat, like, whoa, is, is this actually the covenant, the, this other son? And then Isaac is born. And then this is the third threat to the covenant, um, that if, you know, the, the son who is supposed to bear the covenant dies, then, you know, where's the covenant going to go? And so each one of these places, God provides a way out of the threat. And I think that's part of what's going on here is that God provides a way out um, of that threat to the covenant. Um, we should also point out that um, uh, Jews, Christians, and Muslims all have this, you know, in our scriptures, but we all sort of take something different from it. Um, 
as I understand uh, in many Jewish traditions, uh, it, it's the understanding that the Lord will provide is the sort of the key to this. Uh, in many Muslims, Muslim traditions, it's uh, it's Abraham's obedience uh, in, in his duty and submission that are that are sort of the most important thing. And, and for Christians, I think we see um, a clear resonance then uh, of the son or the, the son being sacrificed by the father or, or the son offering himself as a sacrifice, uh, you know, Jesus. So we all sort of take different things from this. We should also say that, like, as I said before, this is just really disturbing. Um, uh, one of the ways that we could think about this spiritually is, uh, I'd be curious to know, um, in your own mind's eye, how old is Isaac? How old is Isaac, do you think? Is he young? Is he old? Um, he's sort of old enough, right, to carry wood, but, um, you know, it, th that'd be something to sort of to, to think about. I wonder where um, where that is in your mind's eye. And the other thing, too, um, that, that we have to think about is... Um, you know, we as as good modern people uh, were, were horrified by this, by the idea that we would anybody would hurt their children, um, when in fact we, we know that this happens all the time, and um, we, we we read this in the newspapers, um, just horrible, horrible things happening um, of of parents abusing their children and killing their children. But I think even more insidious than that is it, it, something much deeper. And there are systemic ways, I think, that we are abusing and hurting our children. I mean, think about even the, the ways that we address young girls, right? Is that they're uh, cute or they're pretty or we say, oh, my gosh, what a nice little dress you have on. And that that we, in a sense, are are putting that burden on them that that they are only valued by their looks or their appearance or sort of what they do for us. It's interesting, right, that we always talk about how little girls are pretty, but little boys are smart. I think there's something there's something in there societally, systemically, in which we are um, sacrificing our young girls. We do it to boys, too. Um, we keep them in baseball or football or whatever, not necessarily because they like it, but because we have these delusions of grandeur that they will, you know, play in the NFL or they'll play for the Astros. Um, and, and so we kind of, we force that on them. We, we burn them with those things. Um, really not because they want to, but because those are our sacrifices. And uh, I mean, they are our desires and our dreams. And in a sense, we're, we're sacrificing our children for that. I was also reading a little bit uh, this week about student debt. I mean, I mean, talk about burdening our children, right? Student debt uh, in this country is $1.4 trillion. That's $620 billion more than all credit card debt. And you think then those students are paying off those loans for decades. Like, where does that money go? That money goes back to people who own investment portfolios like me. So so we, we can't say that we would never do this like Abraham does because we do this all the time. It, it's just deeply embedded in us. And it's not as a parent, right? We don't have, we're, we're not laying kids on, on top of fire, but there is a sense that we are sacrificing our children. Of course, then there's a way out of all this, right? Is that the Lord will provide and the Lord provides a ram in the thicket, um, something else that can be sacrificed so that we don't have to burden our children and, and sacrifice our children. Um, and I think in modern society, that's probably our pride and our ego that the thing that needs to go is, is our own desire, like our own willingness to hurt our children for our own sakes, to chase our own dreams and desires. So I wonder what that would look like for you. What, what are some of those um, thoughts of pride or of ego that, that need to go? Um, I hear this all the time, right? Um, oh, that millennial, they can't get a job and they're just living in their parents' basement. Well, okay, so that's obviously a question of our own ego that's coming from our ego so maybe the ram in the thicket is for us to ask the next question is i wonder why millennials have a hard time paying off student debt 
or getting a living wage or finding a decent job? I think we have to ask those second questions rather than just revert to our own ego. And I think that's the ram in the thicket, is that we have to look for that ram in the thicket that God has provided, which is probably that second question to understand ways that we can stop sacrificing and burdening our children. So I know this is not a, a really happy, cheery subject, um, but I think it's something that we as the church, as Christians, need to address. Uh, we need to address the ways in which we are hurting our children. Um, it often, like I said, sort of subterranean below the surface. I'd love to hear what you think about this. Uh, I'd love to hear some, some comments or if you have any questions, please email me, jimmy at holycomfortorspring.org or um, leave a comment in the comment section below. Again, it's really great to have all of you and I give you uh, best wishes for a long 4th of July break.